Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truths to you today. Praise God. Now this is a new week and we are in the month of May. Listen, everything God has said concerning this month, He is, he is bringing it to pass. And that's why it's important that you pay attention to His word, pay attention to what He's leading you to do. And in this broadcast, we try to disciple you. Now, this is a di discipleship um, platform. We're trying to disciple you according to the words of Jesus, that we should teach you to observe everything he has taught us. So every day when I bring you God's word, that's exactly what we're doing. And as you're listening, not just, just, just listening casually, pay attention to these words and let your heart be open to God's truth. Because if God's truth is sown in your heart, it will produce the harvest of His Spirit. That's exactly what we expect. And we believe that's exactly what, is, what God is doing in your life. So before we go into today's broadcast, are you ready to make demands for your daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you Lord Jesus. So we have been talking about being in the image of God. Being in the image of God. Now one scripture that we look at in talking about this is Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Paul speaking here. He says, For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works praise god now we were created by god that's why he calls us his workmanship the product of his hands see so i'll say this table is the workmanship of a craftsman a, a, a craftsman a carpenter but a good craftsman see the electronics was the is a workmanship of um, an, a technician or an engineer electrical engineer somewhere See that now? So we are his workmanship. So these folks do their stuff and they put their name on it saying, this is my workmanship. So we are God's workmanship. And every workmanship have a purpose for creating what he creates. He has something on his mind. He's thinking, how do I solve this problem? So he goes to work and then he produces something that will aid to make life easy. So every good workman, think of good works. So how much more God saying we are his workmanship and we are created for one thing, to do those good works which he, the one who made us, have prepared beforehand. There is no one created by God that is just here sorting out himself. There is no one created by God that is here to eke out life for himself. No. The one who created you, produced you for one thing. There is something he created before he created you. He created a life, a walk that you should live and you should do. Now you are here. It's important that you follow to produce exactly what he created you for. If not, then your life will become a waste. So now we go to Genesis chapter 1. And I'll show you something. There God speaking in verse 26. God said, now I started sharing this last week. God said, let us make man in our... I want you to... You know, recently I began to look at this statement. I'm like, this is such an audacity from God. Now, I, I, I say it... Understand what I mean by that kind of statement. 
when I say audacity, is why would God ever think that? You would think God just wants to be God all by himself and just be there. You know, because we don't understand the import of this statement, we just read, let us make one in our own image. So we look at man today and we just say, this is the image of God. No! If you don't follow through to understand, you will miss everything, juggle up everything and use the imperfection to analyze the perfection. Or you begin to say the perfection doesn't exist. God, with so much audacity, said, I want to make man. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Wow. Now I've read this many years. I've thought on this many years. Until when God began to talk to us about, um, he began to say, oh, let's teach on the, uh, being the image of God. So I began to meditate on it, being the image of God. Why, why being the image of God? And you know, I've learned this from, from, I mean, long ago, the Lord had taught me, look, when I tell you to teach something, I'm not telling you to go teach what you know about that thing. I'm telling you to come into partnership with me so we communicate. So that means even me as a teacher, I'm open to learn. So if I'm not learning anything new, then I'm just communicating what's his, what, what I think to you. But in the process of that, I've seen this happen many times. So whenever the Lord says, I want us to teach on this, I'm like, okay, sir, I'm your first student, let's learn. So he began to open my understanding. And for the first time, I realized, how can God make this statement? Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Why would God display this kind of audacity in, 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 in making a statement. What was he thinking? Because if it's a failed project, then he has failed. Then, if it's a project that succeeds, God is literally saying, I don't know if you understand this by, 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 by this statement. God is literally saying, I don't just like being by myself. I want, I want to have an equal. Ah, no, no, no. He can, cannot share his glory with anybody. Ah, no, no, no. Say, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Excuse me. If that is possible, what, what remains after that? If man is in the image, no, he didn't just say in our image, he said in our image and after our likeness. Do you know what that means? Not just taking our form and shape, also behaving like us. So when you see somebody and say, this guy is just like, and you know, except you want to start thinking, maybe that's not what God said. Maybe God said, let us make man in a lesser image. But you know, the interpreters, huh? Now, when you study the bundle of truth and see the acts of God, over time it's so easy for you for you to get and say hmm, that's exactly what god was saying so because we have not analyzed this truth we have been living far from the desire of god consigning us and that's because we have not paid attention to being that image we allow the second part to overshadow us, but let him have dominion. So we, we think we want to have dominion, we want to have, but we don't realize something. We don't struggle to have dominion. In, in being, we will display dominion. See, if we, if we function as the image and likeness of God, we will not have to monster strength to do dominion. You know, like we do today. You know, you, you, you're going for a meeting where you have to pray for the sick, where you have to cast out devils. You start fasting and praying days to that meeting. And what are you thinking about? Let me muster strength and power inside. So when I show up in that meeting, demons will bow. We are talking about when you simply, it's your daily work. You wake up in the morning. I mean, you, 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 
wherever you find yourself. Are you getting the picture? Jesus was sleeping in the boat. He wasn't praying. The disciples came and woke him up. Master, don't you care that we perish? Taking off from sea. He didn't go. Huh? Peter, James, hold your hands together. He didn't do that. He woke up from that sleep and he looked at them. He says, Why are you guys disturbing me? <laughs> That's actually what he said. He said, Oh, you have little faith. <laughs> Why are you guys disturbing me? Why is it that you don't have any faith? So, what was he expecting them to do? You come to think of it. I know what he was expecting them to do. He expected them to believe that despite the storm, they will get to where they are going to. Because he had told them, let us go over to the other side. And that's what he wanted them to have faith in, in that word that he spoke to them. But now they're in the middle of the sea, there's storm, and all they are thinking about is we might just die. So their last resort was, let's wake Jesus up. Because the way this thing is looking, lest we all drown. And they woke Jesus up. And Jesus said, Why is it that you don't have any faith? And he looked at the whole situation. And then he says, Peace be still. And the Bible said there was a great. I love that. I love that statement. You know, hmm. so see how the Lord explained that, that statement to me. You know, he says, Jesus said, peace be still. And there was a great calm. And the Lord said to me that, because I was like, okay, so how do we apply this? That's, that's how I reason. I love to do the word of God. That's me now. I love to do the word of God. I love to do it. <laughs> that's my life. So I read something and I, and I go, hmm, how can I apply this now? How can I, how can I take charge? How can I do this? And the Lord said to me that he didn't pray. I said, yeah, he didn't pray. He just said, he didn't say, oh God, let there be peace. Oh God, let peace be still. He said, he didn't pray. He just commanded peace to be still. So I didn't understand that even the English of it, peace be still. And he said, let, let everywhere be still. That's what we think. Let everywhere be still. Because the Bible says when he said that, there was a great calm. And then the Lord says, no. Before Jesus started out that journey. Now, you see, that's why it's important to be a doer of the word of God. Because when you are a doer, when, when the Lord is explaining something to you, you, you can relate with it so easily. But when you're not a doer and he's, he's trying to explain it to you, it will still be far-fetched. Just like a worker explaining how to do a work to a fellow worker. You know, he says, so when you get, to, yes, I know, I know that place. Because uh -huh, it's been there. See that now? So the Lord said to me, he says, before you start on a journey, you first of all, look at that whole journey. Now that's one thing I do. I don't embark on a trip without seeing the end of that trip. Of course, of course, in the place of prayer and meditation. Okay. So I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, what would you have me go do there? And then the Lord will explain to me and, and, and show me. Now, in the process of time, I would see myself in that place. Then I know, okay, I'm going on this trip. Now, what was the essence of that? So that in the midst of that journey, if anything tries to shake that journey up, you know already where you're going. Now, every believer is supposed to be doing this. So, so Jesus, before that journey, saw that they were going to the other side. He had seen it. He knew, he knew God wanted them to be there. So he told the disciples, let's go over to the other side. They knew that Jesus would not do anything except he sees, what he sees the Lord do. So they started out on that trip. And there was peace when they started out that trip. The, the sea wasn't, wasn't turbulent. There was peace. So in that same peace, he slept. So while men slept, the enemy came and started shaking the whole place. And so when they woke Jesus up and he, he analyzed the situation like, 
This is not how we started the journey. We started the journey in peace. So why is there no peace now? So he, has the, he, he took the place as a judge now to pass his verdict. So what was the verdict? Peace that was there before still be. Do you get it now? Peace be still. Peace come and still be. Now that's all he said. He, he didn't say, devil of turbulence, out of the earth. No, no. I, I began this journey in peace. So, peace be still. I won't recognize who's not, who I didn't invite in this journey. So, peace be still. And peace say, yes, sir. I thought so. And peace took charge of the whole atmosphere. That devil got out of the place immediately. If Jesus had gotten that, that's what happens to a lot of us believers. You've heard God consigning the end. You've, he, knows, he knows the end from the beginning. Now he's told you where this journey is going at. He's told you what, what, what you're going to do. And it's just simple. So, Jesus, Jesus. Father, I bind. Father, I How did you begin that journey? It might be your business. You prayed about this business and the Lord told you, go, you will succeed. Thank you, sir. And you started out the journey and then in the midst of it, there's turbulence and someone is trying to, and then you're getting so offended, getting so angry, getting so, what, what kind of nonsense? How can these people do this to us? Mm -mm 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 step back and remember the place you began did you begin in peace or did you begin in strife if you began in peace it's time to call that peace to still be there are things we fight about we have no business fighting about truly speaking peace be still Peace, be still. That's the attitude you develop. Your business, your marriage, everything. Once you see turbulence, remember how you started. Now that's the first, for why first thing, the, the first thing you must do in any endeavor. Know how you started that thing. Get the word of God consigning that thing. I'm teaching how to how, how to how to function in the image of God. Because Jesus, now I'll share something with you on, on, on Thursday. Yeah, on Thursday. The wisdom of God shows us how to function. But if we don't follow or observe carefully, you know, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, learn, learn, learn of me. What do you learn from him? Learn his ways. That's how the burden is going to be easy and the yoke is going to be light. If not, it's going to be too burdensome for you. You love Jesus. You love to do his work. Learn of him. Learn of him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, whatever situation you find yourself today, remember where you started from. Don't panic. Call that atmosphere that was from the beginning. Call it forth now. And just like Jesus, say, peace, be still. You started your, 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 your business with, with the right capital, and right now, money is gone. You don't know money be still see that now see that now you started your marriage with joy everything was so good you guys are always happy giggling and and, and playing you know, sometimes people say life has happened to you no sir life would happen but peace must be still joy must be still it's by a command brothers and sisters 
don't ever let this situation forget make you forget where you started remember how you started thank you holy spirit my time is up today so listen i declare over your life right now you know some of you started your christian work with that joy and peace and it's been three years down the line and you're wondering whether god is really there with you i command that peace that you experienced from the beginning to be still in your life i command health that you began from the beginning to be still in your life i command that blessing and prosperity that you began from the beginning to be still in your life in the name of the lord jesus christ you got into that city with so much peace and assurance you started out that business with so much peace and assurance but right now everything looks shaking everything looks bad i command that assurance that you had from the beginning i command it to be still in jesus name Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye.